Real 92.3, LA's new home for hip-hop, Big Boy's Big Neighborhood. Boy. It is a pleasure yes. to have this queen back in the neighborhood, hey. man. Angela Johnson, welcome back. Welcome and back. Do we go Angela Johnson Reyes now or Angela Johnson? Listen, I finally added my married name into really? my name. After, Professionally? Yes, after wow. 10 years. Oh, nice. I, wow. I figured, you know You've what? You've been married 10 years? Yeah, going on 11. Wow, congratulations Thank to you. you. Thank you. I figured it was about time. I was like, all right, you I think this, this is getting serious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What'd you say is getting serious? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, this, I'll take your name finally. This probably may be a thing. This probably, so you added, so now even on your tickets, does it say Angela, Angela Johnson, Johnson Reyes? Reyes. Wow. Yes. Congratulations Thank to you. you. You know what's crazy is I recently just found out that you were married. What? <laughs> like for real. Like, you know, because Angela, I do my thing. Uh-huh. And I of don't course. really like follow a lot until it's like of that course. time, so on and so forth. But but yeah. But also, you got a lot of friends. You got a lot of people. Not I don't really. really expect you to keep nah, up. Nah, <laughs> nah, I don't. You know what I'm saying? I don't. I try to keep it just like this. You know, <laughs> you know ha- have you noticed now, do you have more friends or have you gotten to that part in your life where in the mathematics where you start doing your subtraction of people? Oh, definitely have done the subtraction. Yeah. But the thing is, like, I'm so big on community and I love family, friends, like all the things. So before COVID, we had a big house and every party we would have, everybody come over. Every Thanksgiving, it was like, you know, 40, 50 people and people be like, hey, can I bring a friend? We're like, yeah, come bring whoever you want. And it was always just everybody welcome. And then COVID happened. So it was like, now you just have your small circle. Yeah. Yeah. That's when you had to start picking, like, all right, who's my, <laughs> yeah. who, who's like, on yeah. my team? Like, like who can who's I do without? Who, you know what I'm who saying? Who made the cut? Who, who would really be, like, in my in my yes. shower, my bridal? Like, yeah, ah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Amen. But when it came to the pandemic, as being a person that get out on the road, what did that do for you? Because you everybody had to, have, like, either sit down or you had to have this, you know, professional pivot, even yeah. personal. What did you yeah. do? Well, what's crazy is... Um, 2019, I was going through a season in my life where I felt burnt out. Really? And I was but you've been like, working a lot. Huh? I've been touring for 14 years and spending lots of dates on the road. Yeah. Just... Hey, dude, I'm looking at your upcoming dates. Yeah. And That's I'm like, lot. dude, this, like, what is she, one of the Rolling Stones? No, the Rolling Stones don't <laughs> tour like this. Dude, I'm looking at your dates. So after 14 years, it kind of mirrored this. Yes. So now we go into a, a pandemic. Bef- right before the pandemic. You say 2019. I, 2019. I'm talking with my team, my husband, my agents, managers. I'm like, look, guys, I think I need a break. I'm going to go on sabbatical. Mm. And I had decided to take 2020 off. Wow. So you caused the pandemic. We, it was me. It's my fault. It's my fault. I, I put the so ranch all, in the algorithm. Yeah. You already was like 2020. I'm just going to. I took all my dates off the books. Wow. I had one date on the books in February. That was it. And I took everything off. And this is my first time taking a break in 14 years. What were you going to do if we didn't get hit with the pandemic? Well, what I was supposed plan? to do. Yeah. It was supposed to be my eat, pray, love year. <laughs> right. And I was going to go to Europe, you know, Thailand. Thailand. I was going to go meet God in a bamboo jungle, like all the things. I was like, let's go, spiritual. No, I I met God in my backyard. Yeah, you had to. You know what I'm saying? Are you God? Got your mask on, God? (laughs) And and then, even though you say, man, I'm going to go and visit these places, now you got the year off, so called. Yeah, yeah. But everything's closed. But you know what? We can't travel. It was amazing. Like, yes, I was disappointed I didn't get to go on all those trips, but. Like I was saying, I'd been touring for 14 years. I had this beautiful home that I never got to really experience. I hear you. I never got to use my pool. I never, I had a balcony upstairs from my bedroom that overlooked the entire city. I didn't even have furniture out there to even use it because I never was right. out there. I finally like put like a little couch out there, a little water feature. It became my meditation place. And it was like, I finally got to, um, what it, like we work so hard to have all these blessings that we right. don't have time to enjoy. Right. And I finally got to enjoy my home, my, the simple things. I built a garden and I started gardening, learning about tomatoes and vegetables and making my own salsa, pickling my own pickles. Ooh, and man. like all kinds of things that I, I got to do because I was on a break. Yeah, and that's why, and I tell people too, man, like you, the pandemic 
it was one of those things where it sat everybody down. Oh, yeah. It wasn't like, oh, okay, well, you know, they live in Turkey. It doesn't hit there. They make over $100,000, so they're out of the loop. So, no. And I told people, I said, man, for one, this is going to be with us. We got to learn how to live with this uh-huh. as opposed to living without it. But also, what was your pivot game or what did you learn mm. when you were sitting down? And everybody was. It wasn't like you were really missing anything except personal right. missings and business. But you weren't missing anything. There was right. like no concert that you were missing. Yeah. No club that right. you were missing. Right. So did, you took the time to kind of reflect upon yourself oh, and in. look. Yep, I went in. I did all the self-reflection. I learned a lot because, listen, I grew up Christian. Mm-hmm. And I there was a lot of things that I didn't learn in conservative. There's things they don't talk about in Tuesday Night Bible Study. Right. You know what I mean? And so I started to branch out and evolve and learn different things. I started to learn about my sexuality that I wasn't taught growing up Mm -hmm. that when you get married all of a sudden you don't have all this information you don't have the intuitive knowing of your body when you weren't taught to celebrate that Mm. in not just my teenage years but even my 20s like when I first moved to Hollywood chasing a dream I'm gonna be an actress whatever I was very conservative I I, I didn't have sex till I was married I heard that so I was Really going in deep and deconstructing a lot of things in my life that I had held on to for so long. So 2020 was my year of evolving, learning about my body, sexuality, energy, chakras, like all Mm. the things that I had been taught were bad. Mm -hmm. I started learning about them and and being able to celebrate them. And that's also the year when I started writing my book. I heard that. Now we got to talk about the book. Now, did you all, and I not always know, but when did you decide, like, man, I have a story to tell? Well, uh, I've had uh, for about 10 years this document on and my computer. And the book is, is Who Do I Think I Am? Yes. Why who, the title? So Who Do I Think I Am is layered. It's like a story of self-identity. Who am I? Growing up Mexican-American, but I don't speak Spanish. My oh. last name is Johnson. <laughs> I always wanted to be, like, more Mexican than I felt that I actually was. And so it was like, who do I think I am? And the subtitle is Stories of Chola Wishes and Caviar Dreams. Mm -hmm. Girl, I want to be a Chola real bad. (laughs) Let me tell you. I'm not Chola now. But nobody, (laughs) wasn't nobody scared of little Payasa Johnson. Nobody care about her. You know what? Like, I had my lip liner only, lip liner and chapstick. And they was like, we ain't scared of you, Johnson. Oh, Johnson. Right. So it's who do I think I am? Stories of self-identity. But it's all. So who do I think I am to have the audacity to dream such big dreams, being this little Mexican-American girl from San Jose, California, saying, I want to be an actress. Where do you be an actress in San Jose? You right. don't. The audacity I would have to say something so far-fetched out loud. How did you believe it, though? Because because sometimes we do get used to our surroundings, the yes. block. Even people that love you yeah. would probably tell you, like, oh, oh yeah. you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So how, do you, how did you believe that? It started with I would go to the movies, and I wouldn't enjoy them because I was just mad that I wasn't in it. Right. Like, I I remember going to see Training Day and just being mad because I was like, I could do that. Like, I could be that chola standing by that car right there. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, I just need somebody to tell me where's that car park. I don't know how to get there. You know what I mean? Like, how do you do it? You were like, but it's not parked in San Jose, I don't think. So I got to get out. I got to get out to Hollywood. Yeah. And I was uh, at this kind of place in my life where I didn't know what I wanted to do. Like, I had that that dream of being an actress, but I tucked it away in my heart because I was too Mm -hmm. embarrassed to say it out loud because it was so far-fetched. And um, at this time, I had a friend who had moved to Hollywood and she was in like music videos for NSYNC and she was in like a Ross commercial. She was like, she's going. I'm like, listen, I know a famous person. (laughs) (laughs) And so she had moved there and I talked to her one day and I, I was telling her that I wanted to do what she was doing. She's like, well, if you ever move out here, I'll help you get started. And so now this far-fetched fantasy was becoming more of an attainable dream that I could actually go for. So I was like, oh, wow, there's an opportunity there. Then maybe within that same time period, a girl I grew up cheerleading with since I was eight years old, I run into her at a club. You know, we just like vibing on the dance floor. And she's like, hey, I haven't seen you so long. And she's like, yeah, I'm a Raiderette now. And I'm like, no way. She's like, you should come try out. And I was like, no way. (laughs) Like That's not my jam. But then at the same time, I was like, okay, you know what? I was praying about it. I was like, okay, God, I'm going to go to this Raiderette tryout. 
And if I make the squad, I'll do it for one year and then I'm going to move to L.A. and I'm going to pursue my dreams. And if I don't make the squad, I'm going to use that as my sign that the entertainment industry was not for me wow. and I'll do something else. So I drove to Oakland by myself. There were 700 girls at this audition. Damn. I made it to the second round. The second round, we had to learn a dance. And listen, I grew up cheerleading my whole life. Yeah, okay. So I have rhythm. But I'm not a trained technical dancer. So when you start saying things like pirouette three, I'm like, what's a pirouette? I don't yeah, know what that you gotta means. Watch. <laughs> right. Exactly. That was me exactly. <laughs> Watching and learn. Just fake it till you make it. That yeah. was me. So I didn't have dance training, but I was just like giving all my sass, my, you know, hair choreography, <laughs> yeah. like whip it, like all the things. I was just giving my my attitude. And as the choreographer is teaching, at this point, there's probably 300 of us left. And, um, you know, she has her little Britney Spears microphone on. She's standing on stage, doing the counts, teaching us all the moves. And then at one point, she stops the music, and she gets off the stage and weaves her way through the crowd. And she comes up to me, and she's like, clearly, you have no dance training. Whoa. Did she have her mic off at that time? But, <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that? I don't remember oh, if okay. everyone heard it right. or but she came it. just to me. But she was like, clearly, you have no dance training, but you have something that cannot be taught. Wow. And that still gives me the wow. goosies. Wow. When I, that's like the, the, most powerful backhanded compliment I've ever received in yeah, my life. Yeah, it was almost a compliment. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was a compliment. Yeah. It was great. Like, how do I take this? Yeah. Like, do I pour an earring off or do I keep it on? <laughs> <laughs> like, Maybe just one. <laughs> like, yeah, like, I want to whoop her ass, but I guess I'll exactly. hold down. Exactly. <laughs> but it was from that moment. Then I made the squad. <laughs> Oh, my God. And I ended up cheering for the Oakland Raiders that year. It was 2002-2003 season. We went to the Super Bowl that year. Wow. See what kind of lucky charm you You are? You know what I'm saying? You're welcome, Raiders. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, We went to the Super Bowl. I came home from the Super Bowl. And the very next weekend, I packed up my room, and I drove down to L.A., and I've been here ever since, almost 20 years. How do you not stay in the comfort zone? Because there's a Mm. comfort zone in San Jose. There's a comfort zone in L.A. doing little things. And then there's a comfort zone of actually making it Mm -hmm. to cheer for the Raiders, where you say, you know what, let me give it another season. You know, because because sometimes we can, you know, we'll kill things on the vine. Like, let me just give another season, see what's going on here, and and then I'll go to L.A. So you kept your work word yep. and said if i do this one season god then i'm gonna go yeah and you left and i left wow let me tell you it's hard though uh not staying in that comfort yeah. zone even now because once you taste a little bit of success right mm-hmm. it's like once like when you're starving you have that hunger pain that's driving you right but then when you start snacking a little bit you start you're not that hungry yeah. anymore yeah so you, you don't have that drive to like get up and go get some food because you're like well i'm okay yeah, i'm good i'm good right so once you start experiencing a little bit of success a little bit of favor it's very tempting to get in that comfort zone to just ride and coast and see what happens as opposed to getting up right. and continuing to fight for it and go for it and that's something i still have to balance every day yeah i can get real comfortable i mean i've been home for two months as as, as we've been preparing for my book launch, which, which it just launched on the 15th, and we I've been home doing like press interviews and things like that, so I've been off the road, but I go back on the road next week. My tour yeah. starts, and, you and it go goes for real, all huh? the way till November. So I'm having to gear up my body, my spirit, my mind, like everything, and get ready to like get out of my comfort zone, mm-hmm. get out of like, oh, th- this is um, my parking spot, this is my shower, this is my bathroom, this is my friend, this is my living room, this is where I live, this is what feels comfortable and safe. Yeah, I'm about to be living out of a suitcase for yeah. the rest of the year. And you know when, and, and especially the last couple, last few years, like yeah. we've built comfort zones that's easy for others and for ourselves to understand. Yeah, You know, we got you to like even now there's times Angela where we're doing an interview and I did an interview with Cardi B right Mm. and I had Cardi on Zoom and it was like she came out of one interview and she's always great with us so we do the Cardi B interview and it's a great interview she's always nice and then when we're now we're after we're just kind of talking via Zoom but they're doing her makeup and getting her ready for the next one Wow! so I'm like are people going to come back Wow. Because the comfort zone now is like, mm-hmm. man, I can knock out eight stations mm-hmm. right at the house yeah. and I could do this. So, yeah, it, it is different saying, OK, man, I got to get back on this grind and the grind that, you know, yep. you know, so, you know, the the greatness of it and you know, the like ah, yeah. of it as well. 
You know? I absolutely know it. Uh, since the past two, three weeks, I've called probably 35 different radio stations yeah. promoting my book and my tour. This is my first in-person interview Man, I'm so in glad while. to have you in here, too. Thank and when you, you handed me your book, dude, it's just, you know, because I've known Angela. and, and I, But, you know, you, even when we're talking, you know someone. You know, yeah. hey, we're cordial, we talk, whatever, whatever. But then you don't know it's a person's story. Right. And that's when, you know, with the book, it's a story. Mm -hmm. And it's written in, it, you wrote it, it's in your yeah. language. You yes. know what I'm saying? So it sounds like you're talking to us. Yes, and if you get the Audible version, I am talking oh, to hello. you. Oh, <laughs> hello. Hello. But I love pages. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I love same, the page, same. and I love to turn the page, and I, and I love it. But the book is called Who Do I Think I Am? And even with the title. The way you explain the title, I'm like, dude, that's genius. Mm. You know, and I, not genius by marketing, but it has so many different meanings yeah. of teaching people like, dude, like, I left. You know, who yeah. was I to chase my dream? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Because a lot of times, Angela, we get caught up on, like, like I said, we kill things on the vine. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And Tyrese wrote a book called, I may be paraphrasing the title, but it's How to Get Out of Your Own Way. Mm. And sometimes we do block our own blessings. Yes. You know? So have you? What do people come up to you, especially ladies and, and mm. girls, women, what do they come up and say to you? Because I'm pretty sure you've emp empowered a lot Thank of people. Thank you. Um, one of my favorite compliments to receive from people on the road at my shows or wherever is, like if I'm doing a show in Oklahoma and a girl will come up to me after the show and be like, if you lived in Tulsa, we'd be besties. Really? Yeah. <laughs> like people relate and connect yeah. to Do me. Do people feel like they know you? you oh, know. yeah. That's, and that's my favorite thing because when I write material, yes, I want to get a, a laugh. So the, the point when I'm writing is you want to get the laugh. But for me, the ultimate goal is to connect to humans mm -hmm. on a human level, to connect and relate to people in my audience. So when I'm sharing a story about me and my husband, my favorite thing is to see people in the audience go, oh my uh, yeah, God, yeah, him yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh my God, my wife does yeah. that. They start pointing. Oh, we start doing like this. Like yes. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> like, yeah. Exactly. And yeah. that's my favorite did because I'm miss connecting. That? I did. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Because it's crazy because I've been in radio. This is my 28th year, Angela, wow. right? Wow. And it's crazy. I love people. Mm. I love people. I take every picture. I do every, I, I love people. Mm -hmm. And then when it came to, you know, us kind of sitting down, it wasn't like, oh, I don't have people around me. Oh, this feels so good. I was like, dude, I miss people. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I miss them. Yeah. And were you missing people? Like going yeah. to the show and what it felt like and the people laughing and the energy before or after a show or, or just looking at somebody saying, yeah, he's like that too. Yeah. There, let me tell you, there's no feeling like when you're on stage and you, you say something that you wrote, you say a joke, and then the audience laughs and you don't just hear the laugh, you feel yeah. the laugh. It like penetrates your body and it's like... It's like gratitude. Like I said the joke and their thank you to me was the laugh. And yeah. the laugh comes back to my body. And then I say another joke. And it's a big circle of gratitude that we just got going back and forth the whole time for this whole hour that I'm on stage. It's just a whole room full of just gratitude. It's an energy that you can't describe. You can't like right. put it in a jar and sell it. It's and you, you do miss it. But at the same time, for that year, you will also taking care of your mind, oh, yeah. your body, your spirit. You know what I'm saying? I missed it, but I was right. happy where I was. Right. I was like, this feels good. Right. So, I like So this. how many dates do you have? Because I can count them. Right. But it's going to take a while. Do you know right. how many shows? And, and I'm not even talking about what I see on right uh -huh. here. There's two a nights. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how many shows do you guesstimate that you will have between mm. the tour kickoff in November? Well, there's over 60 cities, oh my but Lord. You, you're right. Yeah. There's like, we're doing like in LA, March 25th, we have two shows. Yeah, we have a Friday 7 o'clock and a 9.30. We'll turn. Yes. Angela.com, grab your tickets. Come on. Yeah. The early shows sold out. Sorry. Yeah. But... <laughs> hey, man, it's seven on a Friday. <laughs> yeah. Because usually sometimes the second show is sell out. Right, right, right. Because seven on a Friday in LA means people really want to get there. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So if you sold out the mm -hmm. seven already, then the yeah. 9.30, that's, that, that's a given. Yeah. There's a few tickets left, so yeah. you can you can get them while they hack. Yeah, by the, by the time we put this up, too, like on YouTube or something, they'll be like, man, y'all were lying. Ain't no damn ticket. <laughs> y'all were lying, you know? So do you still make it out to, like, Raider games, or is Raider completely out of your system? Are you, you, still, are you a Raider fan? I am. However, since they moved to Vegas, right. 
I've like kind of disconnected because they're not Bay Area. I'm from the Bay. You know yeah, what I mean? You know what I mean? <laughs> like when I watch the games, I can't be yeah. like, yay. Yeah. You know? Like it's, that's done. Like how do yeah. you support? It's like, just it's just a different it's a different you know? rating. Yeah. So I have not been to Las Vegas. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. yeah. Giving them Thea's face. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I heard like that. I don't I have that connection anymore. <laughs> but also what's crazy, so I'm Raider fan forever. But the 49ers sent me like Uh-oh. a jacket and sweater, and they're like, Hey, if you ever want to come to a game, you know, we know you're uh-huh. not with the Raiders anymore. And I was like, Look at 49ers over here, Tom. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Trying to slide, to slide in the DMs. Yeah. Yes. She's like, Hold on, let me check my Raiders DM. No, they ain't said nothing yet. <laughs> You're just gonna have to go ahead and get your 49er gear. Okay, thank you. Going out there, and, and you was like, "Come to a game." What exactly does that mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? In the suite, you know, I eat. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Do I parking? Okay, yeah. I probably have to go ahead and check that out. <laughs> Do you get the Angela Johnson Reyes perks? Sometimes it's crazy, huh? Sometimes. You know, some people say like, like, man, there's no um, what's the word that I'm looking for? Privilege. Right. You know, we say, oh, there's white privilege, this privilege. But there is privilege. Oh, for sure. On celebrity privilege. Oh, yeah. And that's why when people say there's no white privilege, I'm like, dude, come on. You got to understand white privilege. Uh-huh. Because I understand celebrity privilege. Uh-huh. You know come what I'm saying? On. Like, I'll get in line and like, big, big, come on, man. Like, yes. Oh, okay, all right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I understand that privilege. Uh-huh. I eat. When I was homeless, nobody gave me food. Yeah, for But on. now that I have something I can pay for it, I'll be like, hey, oh, big, we got that. I'm like, oh. Uh-huh. Can I get something to go? Okay. <laughs> Come on. So do you have privilege? Do you see the privilege? Yeah, it depends on where I'm at in certain areas. Yes. Um, but even here's the thing. Like, even if you're not celebrity, you just look celebrity. Right. I remember when my husband and I first got married, and he's in music, but at the time, he was in a Christian band that was not huge. They, right. they were, you know, doing the Christian circuit, churches, and, like, you know, Winter Jam Christian tour. Um What's my so name, Jeremy Riddle? We, yeah, yeah, open it up for Jeremy Riddle. Yeah. Like, <laughs> we got a date with Jeremy tonight. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> so we went on our honeymoon, and we went to St. Lucia. And I remember when we landed, my husband, like, he has this afro, and we used to say, like, he either looks like Maxwell or Lenny Kravitz. Oh, depends on what neighborhood you grew up in. Right. You know what I mean? Like, that's who he looks like. Max Kravitz. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. he, he looked like that. He has his afro. He has big sunglasses on. He's always wearing jewelry. He always smells good. He always looks good. He just... That's his vibe. Right. He's Puerto Rican, and he's just like, hey, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> Dancing down the runway. You know? <laughs> <laughs> he's just saucy everywhere we go. Meanwhile, I'm like in sweats, like, right. are we on a flight? Right. Like, <laughs> so he, he gets off just look and fly. As soon as we walk in to the airport, like all the, the workers just start looking at him, and they're like, what, what do you do? Mm-hmm. And he's like, mm-hmm. music. Yeah. But that's all he says. Mm-hmm. Music, they go, oh, come on, up, come, yeah, on, come up. on up. And then they just move us right to the front. And then they like, she with you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you want her to come? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, can you please bring her in too? Right. Thank you so much. At this point, God like, I'm you. selling out tours everywhere. Yeah. You know, he don't recognize nothing about my wow. face, but he was like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. He said, me, he probably somebody. Come yeah. on, come yeah. this way. Look the part. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? And he ain't even faking it till he make it. He was no. true. I do yeah. music. Yes. And then they took it and ran with it. They like, was like, oh, he probably produced for Dr. Who wanted his producer? Or, or somebody, you know yeah. how when people be like, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I like your music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't, I don't do music. Or, or my thing, I get sometimes, Angela, if I'm taking pictures, right? And it'll be like somebody come, oh, big boy, somebody come. And then it'll be that one person that you know they don't know who you uh-huh. are, but they still like, oh, yeah, my son listens to you. Yeah, your, yeah. Or, <laughs> great tackle in the Super Bowl or something. You know what I'm saying? You're like, uh, and I hear people yeah. too. You hear people say, "Who is that?" Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who is that? Yeah. Do you hear the "Who is that?" or do oh you know God. when somebody is coming up to you? Oh yes. yeah, yeah. I I clock them out of the corner of my eye. I see them recognize me, and I'm like, oh, "Okay, hold on. Here they're about to come over." Hey, yeah. Hey. <laughs> How are you? Yeah. No, I wasn't on the phone. No, yeah. I wasn't. <laughs> it's a pleasure to see. Yeah, I'll stand up. Oh, yeah, and, 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 yeah I'll take my mask off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's fine. You're vaccinated? Yeah. It's fine. It's whatever. Right, right. Just let you know. I remember one time I was at a show. This is years ago. And I had booked a role on the TV show The Shield. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. this was my first co-star role that I booked. Like, I auditioned for it. I booked it. I was playing a homeless teenager, trying to bum a cigarette off a detective. Like, I thought I was about to win an Oscar. Yeah, like, let's go. You and know for a work-ass homeless teenager, <laughs> bum c- cigarette know? off detective. Yep, that was me. <laughs> yeah. I was ready for I did my, my role, everything. Um, 
And the day the episode aired on TV, I had a premiere party at my house. I love you. Like, all my friends were there. We had pizza, soda, napkins. We were loaded. Yeah, like, yeah. everything. And I remember we're watching the episode, and I know that my scene's the very last scene of the episode, because it's like, save the best for last, I think is how they work. Yeah, I don't know for yeah. sure. <laughs> and, of course they do. And so we're watching it, and I see the detective. He's about to walk up to me. I was like, okay, here comes the detective. And then right as they're about to get to my part, all of a sudden, the 10 o'clock news pops up in the corner. And the credits start rolling. Oh, oh no. They cut they my part. Cut oh, <laughs> they cut my part from damn. the show. I have all my friends sitting on the couch oh. and we're all like, and I'm like, wait, how are they going to hear my part if you already hear the 10 o'clock news? <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, how, how are they going to hear me? Oh my hey, man, God. and you know what's crazy about that, Angela, is that that moment, that was it. Mm -hmm. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Like, now you can look yeah. back and it's like, oh, I've done this, I've done right. that, I got tours. Funny, but at that moment, it's like, oh, oh shh, shh. <laughs> you know, and tonight, seven people were... <laughs> right, <laughs> right, exactly. That happened, that happened to me at a movie. There was this movie, Taken, before like Taken came out in the theaters. I saw it online, and I was like, oh, my gosh, I got to take my family to go watch this. You guys got to watch this one scene. And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, oh, it's coming up, it's coming up, it's coming up. Mm -hmm. And it passed by and it never showed. Yeah, you gotta look. Yeah. You, 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 you gotta look on the floor for it. Like, right. Cut those <laughs> like, Where's what? that editing bay? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh man. So I full on got cut out of the episode. Oh, you never man. see my face at all. But cut to a couple years later. Say it. I'm at a show and I'm doing my meet and greet, and this couple comes up to me and they go, "We loved you on the Shield." Because they saw it on my IMDb oh. page. Oh! <laughs> Not, hey, hey, dude, in, in your heart, Angela, you, you can't tell them. No. You know what I'm saying? No. You can't tell them. You know what I'm saying? No. Oh, man. And I know I know that you played Tree in fifth yeah. grade. Yeah. Like, oh, they definitely, yeah, they definitely on yeah. IMDb. Oh, and, and you know, you got to make them feel good because you can't yeah. go, oh, really? Uh -huh. Really? Well, what did you like about where'd it? Where'd you see it? Because I didn't get to see <laughs> yeah. it. Be because I was embarrassed in front of all my friends. <laughs> yeah. yeah, bringing up, bringing up that energy oh, could you forward me that link <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> like where did where did you see that at? because locally it didn't run yeah. like I, w I would love to have that yeah great so job. so it wasn't just like the news popped up your scene was cut cut oh. out oh cut <laughs> I love oh how she's saying, gosh. you know, they say the best for last. I think yeah. that's how Hollywood works. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but it's been a lot of work since then, though. Yeah. Huh? It's it's crazy, Angela, wow. because I'll see you, like, online, or i see how the book is there. And I remember Joe Grande. Joe worked with us in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And I think our introduction was through Joe. Yeah. And you, at one point, you lived with Joe, right? Yep. And yep. Joe put you out. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah, showed him. He, he kicked me out. Hey, man, you should let he him stay in him. one of your houses or, or let him go you to, know? like, an Airbnb, and when he get there, the cold oh don't work. Gosh. You know what I'm saying? But I know your heart is different. I know you're not petty like that. You probably just pray for him. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I wrote about him in my book, and I, I sure did put him on blast. Right. And I told him I live with Joe. He had the best time ever until he met this woman, and she didn't like me living there that much. So then she kicked me out, and yeah. Joe let her do it. But guess what happened? They got divorced, so that's your fault. Wow. wow. That's what you get for <laughs> choosing uh, half us over family. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, man, and you know, it's tribute. You, you want your book. friends and the people that you love, you want them to grow, and you want to see them happy. Yeah. But he probably reading the book like, damn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like, Joe, I'm writing my book. Oh, what are you putting in there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, but that, that's an amazing story, too. You, and yeah. you know what I love about life? It doesn't end there. Like, it didn't end at, you know, in San Jose. It doesn't end with the Raiders. It doesn't end with Los Angeles. It doesn't end with getting cut out of The Shield. Yeah. And The Shield was the, one of the most popular shows on right. TV at the time. Right. And you continue on this journey. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you appear to still be happy on yeah. this journey. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. um, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of balance. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, like I got to the point where I was... Uh, depleted. Right. And I needed to go on that break. I needed to go on that sabbatical. And I think that's something that I've learned is you have to prioritize your health. Mm -hmm. You have to prioritize your mental health because um, we can get so caught up in not wanting to miss out. There's been so many times where I would not take a vacation. Right. Because I'm like, what if I miss an opportunity? What if an audition comes up and I can't do it? Mm -hmm. What if uh, they're going to be filming something, but I can't film it because I'm on vacation somewhere. Let me not go on a break. Because we, we get into that um, survival mode, that mm -hmm. scarcity. Like, oh, yeah. no, let me let me just be here. And, like, we hold on to everything so tightly. 
But I got to this point where I needed to start prioritizing my health, my right. mental health, go on a That's break. That's hard to do. It really is because we all want more. Right. Like we could be happy and where you you're qu- at. And we're quick to tell somebody else, take a break. Yeah. You know, relax, get mm-hmm. get it together. But it's, it's man, it's hard to feed yourself the medicine. It really it, is. It, it really is. And sometimes we don't until it's too late. Mm-hmm. You know, like something happens and you're like, damn, I wish I would have. Mm-hmm. I wish I would have. So for you to just kind of step back and especially a step back when things are really still right. moving. Right. And just say, no, I got to take care of me. And that's probably one of the best decisions that you've made. And let me tell you, too, because all of that self-doubt creeped in. So I made that decision to come off the road to take a break, go on sabbatical. And then it's January 2020. And... um COVID hasn't happened yet. And so I'm seeing like on social media, all my friends that are still crushing it, killing it. And then that comparison game starts yeah, kicking in. Yeah. And then it starts becoming like, oh my God, did I just mess up? Did I just take my myself out of the algorithm right. of life? Like, are people going to forget about me now? Or like, and I start self-doubting all of those things. Like, what did I really need a break or was I just a coward? Right. Damn. All of those things. And then I start seeing like, look at my friend, like she's tired, but she's still hustling. Look at my friend, like he's exhausted, but he just is doing this arena. Right. And like, here I am like, on my couch. You know what I mean? And so I started doubting my decision to prioritize my health. And mm-hmm. I was like, man, I messed up. And then I start doing the thing where I'm like, okay, even though I messed up, at least I'll take this time to blah, 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 blah. But it wasn't a mess up. But right. I, that's what I was framing right. in my brain. Well, even though I messed up, blah, 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 blah. I'll just, I'll work out a lot. And I'll, I'll get my body ready for like an action movie or something like that. I start putting all these things in my head. But at the time, I, I had a sinus infection, which looking back, it could have been an early COVID case. Who knows? <laughs> right. um, yeah. I had a sinus infection. I couldn't even get up off the couch to go to the gym and work out. I couldn't do anything. I literally was on my couch depleted watching everyone succeed and rise and i was like man i messed up and then all of a sudden covid happens and all of a sudden i start seeing like on my instagram feed my friend canceled his tour my friend she canceled her tour every tour canceled 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 and i do not relish the fact that my friends had to cancel things like that's awful I, in that moment, felt a peace in my body and my soul right. that was like, you are right where you're supposed to right. be. You did exactly what you were supposed and to be. And how long would that have, if it, if it would have came up, how long would you have felt like, okay, I did make the right decision, if it wasn't this decision and that pandemic? Like, right. it, 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 it had to come together for you to say, okay, I understand. I I, I, I think I would have went the whole year thinking I made a right. mistake. One hundred percent. You know, and 100%. then I, and then thought pandem- you had to play catch up. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I'm I'm not grateful for the pandemic happening, but I'm grateful for the um, clarity. Yeah. That I received. And you got to know how to use it. You yeah. got and, and not use like oh it's beneficial, but you got to know what that sign is mm-hmm. and why it came to it. And sometimes you got to listen to the quiet as well because oh, we yeah. spend so much time being noisy and this and then you're like okay well let me just listen to what I'm supposed to listen to. Uh And sometimes the most quietest situations bring you the most volume in in your answers, the loudest answers. So for you to step away from something and really see like, man, and and when you talk about the self-doubt, that's real. And when you talk about like, man, did I make a, a, I do that all the time where I'm like, man, should I have done that? Mm -hmm. And sometimes I find myself just doing things Mm -hmm. just so, you know, and, and plus, you know, you come from a, a, a background where we didn't always have it. Right. I come from a background that I didn't always have it. I come from a background, you know, seven kids, my mom, single mother, very rich on love, mm-hmm. you know, very affluent mm-hmm. on love. But we didn't have the, a lot of the means. Affluent you know on saying? love, not so much groceries. Right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I also was like, OK, well, you know what? With what I've learned just kind of growing up. And not having certain things, I was like, I got to go get it. I got to go get it. Yep. I got to go get it. I got to yep. go get it while I can. And even after so many years in radio, I'm still kind of like, I'm just going to go do it. Mm-hmm. You know? And mm-hmm. I know sometimes I need to shut down. Yep. But then you say, man, how do you shut down? How do you? You know what I'm saying? Listen, there's a Bible verse that says, be still and know that I am God. There's power in the silence. Mm -hmm. And we don't realize how many things are loud in our lives. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest things is social media. Mm -hmm. We are all on our phones. We're all scrolling. We're all 
typing away. We're all looking. We're all, you know, like, oh, mm-hmm. what's trending? Yeah. What's all the things? The fear of and missing out and everything. Exactly. Yeah. There's so many things that are loud in our lives that we don't realize it. That when you finally turn things off, shut things down, give yourself boundaries, say, oh, you know, what? I'm not going to look at Instagram as soon as my eyes open. Right. You know what? I'm going to put my phone away around eight o'clock and just be with myself, mm-hmm. be with my silence. That is a hard thing right. to do. But when you do turn things off, turn off the loud noise, when the car uh, horn outside stops honking, when the next door neighbor's dog starts stops barking and you're finally in silence, you can hear your spirit that's mm-hmm. been whispering things to you that you couldn't hear. You can hear that direction that you've been asking for and wondering, what do I do with my life? Where do I go? You're asking all these questions and trying to listen for the answer, but there's too much noise in your life. When you finally turn things off, then you hear your spirit saying, go left. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Don't stop. Okay, pause right here. Stay here for a minute. I need you to stay here for a minute. But if you didn't hear that, then you'd be wondering, like, why am I here and not moving? I'm not succeeding. I'm not doing this. I should be going forward. I should be going forward. When really, no, you're right where you're supposed to be. Could you have written Who Do I Think I Am five years ago or ten years ago? It wouldn't be that book. Right. Um, I I would have started my stories, you know, because I had this document on my computer for ten years that was like, you know, in stand-up comedy, I'm a storyteller in stand-up comedy, and we're taught cut the fat, get to your punchline quickly. Same in radio. Set up punchline, like cut all the details out. But I have so many good stories that each detail is important and it helps paint the picture. It helps set the tone for what was happening in my life at the time so you can really get the story. And so there'd be certain stories that I would try on stage and they wouldn't work. And I was like, you know Mm. what? I'm going to leave that for a book. And so I had this documented computer. I was like, this for a book one day, this for a book one day. And it was like, this is what one of my chapters would be like. This is what I'm going to tell this story in a book. And so I started compiling this over the were past Were you really years. writing the book? Or were you just put? you know how sometimes I'm like, oh, this, this is for my documentary, this is for my book. And you're kind of storing things. I was storing it for right, 10 years. Right, yeah. It was, ne- it was not really happening. <laughs> right, it was yeah. a thing I was yeah. saying right, I was going to do. Right. So I was like, yeah, this is for my book one day. This is for my book one day. For 10 years, when's the day coming? You right. know what I mean? Then 2020 happens and I get a call from my agent and he was like, hey, I think it's time for you to write your book. Yep. And as soon as he said that, I could feel my spirit start bubbling. It was that little whisper that was like, yeah, he's right. Now's the time. And I was like, oh, I think you're right. I think I need to write my book. And he's like, just think about, like, you know, what would your chapters be? And what stories would you want to tell? I'm like, I already got you. Sent. Boom. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? You was and, like, just clear my line. Hold on. It's yeah. coming right now. <laughs> you know, like, man. So with your book and writing it, do you feel like, and, and it's life, it's another book in you. Mm-hmm. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. it's never over when we get to the last page. Like, when I wrote my book, I was like, man, I said it. Mm-hmm. I did it. And then now I'm like, I got to write another. And it's not Mm -hmm. for me. I got to write another because there's so much more that I feel like I want to share. I've learned a lot. Yeah. You know, I've learned a lot. And sometimes, and even when you read your your own book, you learn a lot about yourself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure when you you read your book, and not as you're writing it and doing proofs and looking at it, but have you had a chance to sit down and read your book again. You know, I haven't. I yeah. haven't sat down Watch. with like the hard copy. Separate yourself from it a little bit, mm-hmm. and then go back to it one day. You're, you're mm-hmm. gonna be, you're gonna forget stories yeah. that you wrote in there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I thank you for coming into the neighborhood. <laughs> it's, it's so great to catch up with you. Thank you. And like I say, man, we we always think people are good from a distance. Oh, she's on Instagram. She's fine. She's right, this. She's right, that. Right. But to connect back with you and have this great conversation, I appreciate you for coming into the neighborhood. The book is Who Do I Think I Am, and it's available now. Yeah. Yes. So congratulations Thank to you, you on that, man. And she's touring all over the country, all over the country, bro. So this, hopefully you get you some sleep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully you get you mm-hmm. some sleep. But Angela, thank you for coming into the neighborhood, Big Boy's Big Neighborhood. Boy.